Um, hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're discussing the Beatitudes, and this time, the final Beatitude. Blessed are they that suffer persecution for justice' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when they shall revile you and persecute you, and speak all that is evil against you untruly for my sake. Be glad and rejoice, for your reward is very great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets that were before you. Matthew 5, 10-12 there is some confusion as to the real meaning of this beatitude. Some people have claimed that it refers to suffering and persecution as positive things, blessed things in and of themselves, but that seems far from clear in this passage. After all, it never specifically said that the persecution itself was blessed, only those who suffer it. Why would the persecution be blessed in this sense? Why would the blessed be allowed to suffer persecution? We've talked a little about this already five episodes ago when we discussed the reasons that good people have for mourning. Just being righteous or seeking to be righteous means that you recognize when something is wrong, so you suffer more because of that recognition than a person would if they didn't recognize it. In the same way, there are many people who don't recognize evil when they see it and who like it that way because it hurts less. When someone, like a prophet, sticks a pin in their conscience to try to wake it up, it's not a pleasant sensation, because it reminds them not only that so many things are wrong, but that they themselves have been responsible for some of that wrongdoing. Because of that, they lash out. They insult and mob and persecute someone whose only crime is speaking the truth. As Jesus says, they persecuted the prophets in the same way. Those who speak the truth will always face persecution due to the fact that some people prefer to be ignorant in order to protect their pride and feel less guilty. In short, the persecution of the just is just part of the existence of human free will and sinfulness. Why is it good to willingly suffer persecution for God's sake? Putting it simply, Anyone can claim to love another person, but it's the one who's willing to make sacrifices for someone else and to face difficulties and hardships to help someone other than themselves who really does love that person. It's easy to just sort of stand by and tell somebody you'll be with them in spirit or some other such line. The hard part of love, and the part that's really worth it, is being willing to give things up for their sake and to suffer for them. That's why it's so good when we do these things for God, especially when we do them willingly. So, what is the blessing that those who are persecuted for defending God's truth receive? The blessing is that they're in the right, and God recognizes this. When the time comes and God brings justice to the world, this will be a problem for those who did the persecuting, but for those who face that persecution with the faith that God would, after a fashion, reward them for their suffering, there will be a great gift. As it says, Be glad and rejoice, for your reward is very great in heaven. Next time, what are the precepts of the church? Uh, that's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.